Even Stanley doesn't want to go out today. What do you see out there? Great day for a kitty cat to sit inside on a fuzzy blanket, huh? Hey friends, it's Sonya with Junk Monkey Paint Company and welcome back to my daily vlog. We woke up to some beautiful snow this morning. On days like this, sometimes just sitting at my table and doing a little art just is the bee's knees. Took a shower, had breakfast, and now I think I wanna start my day with a little bit of creating. Every single day I do my best to create something or another. I think I always create every single day of my life. It comes in different forms. And today I don't feel like I wanna paint a piece of furniture. Today I think I just wanna sit at the table and maybe work on a painting. So let's go do that. These are some thrift store frames that I found and we are going to flip them into some beautiful wall art for us today. One of the first things I'm going to do is I think lay down a backdrop. This book really caught my attention today. Actually, I really like that right there. It kind of feels a little bit wintry to me with the blues and the greens that are in here. Maybe this is the snow this morning has me thinking about a fox, has me thinking about snow. That blue and orange is really pretty right there. Blue and orange go so good together. So I like this, and because my fox is going to be obviously an orange color, although you can do whatever you want with it, I think it will be fun to use papers that play off each other really nice. So let me grab a few color pieces that I wanna, ooh, this is pretty, that I wanna work into the background. Isn't that pretty right there? Kinda looks like snowy. Let's clean our glass. And take off the price tag. $5.99. I could not have built a beautiful frame like this for only $5.99. You can use Mod Podge for this next part, or you can be somebody like me and find Liquitex on sale. It's a pretty expensive product. Regularly at Hobby Lobby, it was $24.99. I found it in the clearance section for $4.24. I'm also using a sponge and a stick here. This is so I can lay my medium down on the glass. And what we're gonna do is basically glue down our pretty designer paper. And I'm putting the Mod Podge on the bottom and on the top. All right, now we let it dry. We go get a refuel on coffee and we let this sucker dry. So I like the textured background that doing this gives me, but if you're somebody and you're not into this shabby love, put down a layer of uh, Junk Monkey chalky style paint and what it will do is it will stick to the glass and give you just a nice flat canvas in what other whatever color that you uh, choose to put on it. Like you can do a vintage white background or even black velvet or anything that floats your boat. I love that. It's perfect and perfectly perfect for me. I don't mind wrinkles or anything like that. I try to get it as smooth as possible, but at the end of the day, you'll see that when we use this as a backdrop, honestly, texture can be your friend and give you some really cool looks. You know, I walked out into the kitchen to get some coffee and this little guy was sitting on the cupboard waiting for me. There's a theme going on here. While we're finished waiting for our backdrop to dry, let's go ahead and scoop out our paints. And so I'm gonna use my Junk Monkey Chalky Style paints. What's really nice is our paint is made thick and because of that, you're able to pick it up on a palette knife. And so I'm gonna teach you guys how to do a Fox Shabby Style with a palette knife today. You can use brushes too if you feel more comfortable. But I'm gonna use Pumpkinator and I'm pulling out Vintage White out of my stash. 
I'm gonna pull out my black velvet, my cup of water on standby. Let's get Mr. Fox going. So we know that a fox pretty much has a, like a triangle kind of head, his body, and then a really cool tail, and we'll go from there. So I just wing it, guys. When you're doing this, your brush strokes should be really nice and loose. We're not trying to make him perfect. He's gonna be perfect, but in his own way. All right, and so there, there's the basic bones of Mr. Fox, just as outlined. So again, the triangle, very simple body. In fact, you know what? If you don't want to have to draw any arms or paws, just like swoop his tail. I could have swooped his tail up right here if I want. I may put some words here later. So I left a little space right there, but that call is totally up to you. Next up, I am reaching for one of my palette knives, and they're basically knives that have a handle, so that way when you work with them, you don't have a flat knife that lays down on your, your work and smudges it all up. So, you have, the, you have the handle, the raised handle, on your knife. Like, picture this being like a butter knife. And when you start using palette knives, you start to like develop your favorite one that you like to go to. But there is no rule, just go with whatever feels good in your hand. I kind of like this size right here. So let's go with this little guy. I actually should probably put a little belly on him. I just thought about that. Maybe I should put like a little belly here somewhere, you think? Cute little furry belly. We're going to go ahead and work with our Pumpkinator and our vintage white. Remember when two colors combine, they make a really cool other color. In this case, it's gonna be a really like creamsicle, dreamsicle, much lighter color. So I like that ability to be able to do, to do so. I think when you do marbling with two paints as well, picking up a little bit of each onto your palette knife, basically it's gonna be like frosting a cupcake. It gives you a really cool marbling effect. Pick it up on our knife. And now what we do, it's, it's just like paint by colors. So let's fill it in. The beautiful thing about using a palette knife is that you do not have to be particular. I love how his head is coming together right there. He's gonna be so cute. You don't want to rub your paint too much because it'll start to marble too much. You want a little bit of the white, a little bit of the orange coming through, but um, you don't want to marble it too, too much. Make sense? And there we go, he's coming along pretty cute. Let's go ahead and fill in his eye area here with a little bit of that white. But let's try to keep it as maybe as clean as possible. It might pick up a little bit of the black from the outline that we did, but let's try to keep it as bright as possible so it will not blend in too much with that creamy orange body, that marbling that we did in his body.
then let's work on his tail. And I almost forgot his cute little fuzzy body again. What was I thinking? It's cute even like if you want to, to do these foxes or little animals and you could do things like turn his belly patch of fur into a heart shape. That would be super cool. All right guys, here's an up close look from my view from where we are right now. That's why it's so fun to create texture with our chalky style paint. Can you see that from the side? You see how much texture is in this piece? Absolutely beautiful. I'm wondering if I should make the inserts of his ears to be white. What do you guys think? I might do that just to soften them up a little bit and to keep with the belly fur and the tail fur, shake your tail feather and just make him feel more shabby chic and less dark. So let's go ahead and do that in fact. So I'm gonna reach for my palette knife. I'm gonna go into my vintage white. And let's soften up his ears. Also, his nose is solid black right now, so what we can do is take a little bit of, well, let's do this, yeah. Let's grab a little bit of the black and a little bit of the white together again and go over the top of it. It'll create some really cool texture, but it'll make his nose not feel, again, so harsh. We'll just, we'll just have a few little peekaboos of the white in his nose, which will soften it up a little bit. So into the black we go. Oh look, he's got an eyeball, guys! Friends, we just gave this fox the beautiful gift of sight. I don't know about you, but I am thankful to be able to see all the beauty. And let's put a little bit of white in his eye. So the next thing I'm gonna do is work onto the background. So we've got these shabby outline um, lines all around Mr. Fox and when we add our background in this is what's really cool you get to see part of whatever is back there whether you painted it solid or whether, whether you did some really cool funky mixed-media background for it and then we're gonna take our antique lace and go over the back of it okay you could do any color you want any combo you want this is your your art piece for me because I used white in here I don't want to use white on the background because it'll be an awful lot of white but if I use our antique lace which is a cream color it's an off white that way is, is bits of fur will still show up really really nice so I poured some out right here in the corner I am going to go right ahead and tap in to the antique lace with my palette knife and now this is the fun part this is when when the fox like pops and comes to life friends can you tell I'm a little excited again frosting the cake except now we're gonna put the frost on the background so you can fix up your edges your outline around your character whatever you decide to do and for me I don't like to totally cover in my background because like I said I want to see some of those pretty papers that I laid down to pop through the back and as you're doing this don't be afraid to turn your picture really get into it so that you can just create a beautiful background around your piece And the other thing I'm thinking about doing is painting the frame. So it's in a gold frame right now. I'm thinking of doing my lettering in black right here against the light background. And to be totally honest with you, I'm thinking about doing this black to kind of keep it on that shabby side. But what I can do is distress the edges and bring and keep that gold because I do love that gold ornate feel to this piece. But at the same time, I want to like make it match the, um, the fox a little bit more. So to do that, I'm just going to grab my shabby chip brush. All the paints that I use today and these brushes you can find on my website at junkmonkeypaint.com. Now what I'm going to do is grab for that black velvet. Actually, I have a bunch still left out here in my tray. This paint goes a long way, my friends. I'm going to go ahead and put that right into my black velvet. Get a little bit on here. Offload it just a little bit on the side of my tray. 
because to do a dry brush look, you don't need a lot of paint on your brush. And at the end of the day, you're not trying to get full coverage, right? So now what we do is go ahead and do a brush over. Oh my gosh, already I can tell that this was a good idea. So my fox is gonna dry a little bit more. I'll probably do a few little touch-ups once he dries. I can distress my frame a little bit more to knock off some of the black velvet chalky style paint to bring some of that brass color frame through. And like I say, I might put some words right here. That's my plan right now. I'm really thinking that something right there. So yeah, let me think. What would, <laughs> what does the fox say guys? What does the fox say? All right, let's add the very last polka dot. I love me some shabby flowers, polka dots, stripes, and whimsical creatures. I'm gonna make this one look like it's just kind of disappearing off the edge. So to bring you up to speed, what I've done is taken a sand block and I distressed the edges of this frame. And then the next thing I did was put some polka dots in. You can do polka dots with your brush and draw them. If you have like chunky brushes that have a nice big thick handle, you can use that to create some different size polka dots. I threw a few of those in here just to keep it whimsical. You could stencil them on if you have a polka dot stencil. And then the next thing that I did was do in a little saying right here. Can you guys see what it says? It just kind of came to my mind. Crazy like a fox. So I stamped on there, crazy like a fox. You can hand letter if you're really good at hand lettering and you want to do it that way. You can cut words out of a newspaper. You can go to places like Michael's and Joanne Fabrics and actually get the words that are pre-printed and just kind of put something together for yourself. Or you could also be like me today and if you hit up the Dollar General, I'm pretty sure that's where I got this pack from. This was uh, just for a couple dollars. These are just wooden stamps. They have that little rubber underside to it just like that and you can stamp them in paint you can stamp them in ink whatever sort of thing again floats your boat right so the beautiful thing about shabby style is that it's very imperfectly perfect so I never ever like measure out my letters I never ever worry about like being super super crazy about oh my gosh is that Z off just a little bit is the X touching his fur should it not because at the end of the day, it just adds to that magical, shabby, whimsical feel. So the last step that we're going to do, I'm just gonna wait for my polka dots to dry here. And then what I'm, you're gonna see me do is grab, I'm dealing with two cans today because I have a little bit in each. Let's see which one has the most, probably this one. This is our banana peel. It is a protective coating for your furniture, your projects things that you paint. Think of it like a banana, has a peel, an outer coating, a carrying case. When you do work like this, much like when you're painting furniture, take the time to seal it because it will preserve your work. And it also leaves it with a really cool finish that just gives it more of a professional edge. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and brush it on all over. I'm just gonna use a soft flowy brush because I want good coverage of the banana peel all over this piece. But just make sure your painting is entirely dry. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Let's let this dry. So my banana peel is still drying. Just a couple quick tips would be to definitely go very light, use a soft brush, and remember, you never wanna to put too much of your sealer on so that basically it saturates your paint to the point where you smear it when you continue to wipe. So like, I don't wanna wipe my words off or smear my polka dots or anything like that. So move really quick, move really light. Just do one nice light coat is really all you need. I'm gonna put this one out of my dining room and see what it looks like out there. So here is our lovely Mr. Fox. 
Here's his buddy and something to keep warm with. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna paint the other one, guys, that other frame and do it maybe with another kind of woodland, kind of fallish creature. Honestly, I keep him up year round because he's so darn cute and adorable. This was just a fun project to get into today. It's hmm, if you were a fox, where would you want to be set up? He's kind of cute down there too. And then do you think I should paint the other one to be like a girl fox and maybe put a flower crown on her, make her look Look super shabby sweet that way what's your vote or should I put something with mr. Fox like a whimsical owl what would feel kind of you know magical wonderland let me know what's your thoughts below friends thanks for hanging out with me on another daily vlog I love it when you spend time with me thank you for coming back again and again and please give me a thumbs up when you do give me a thumbs up or you leave a comment below it lets me know if you like these types of videos and if so I will definitely do more for you all right I'll see you guys again tomorrow be sure to subscribe hit the bell that way you get video alerts every single time there's another video for you to watch go bananas and get creative will ya just do something today Something you love?